It says, verse 9, they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. All right, so here is why I care about this. So is eschatology essential that everyone has to agree on? No. Um, are there men who I consider Christian brothers despite the fact that they're mistaken on this issue? Yes. In fact, out of three commentaries I use to prepare for stuff, two of them disagree with me on this. Um, so you can have opposing views, still be a brother. The question that matters is, is this doctrine of the rapture from God? Basically meaning, is it in Scripture? Or is it from Satan? Because it's not in Scripture. Now from everything we've read so far, it's pretty clear that a war is coming. It's a last ditch effort by Satan to claim God's throne. Satan is bringing everything he has against the saints. Now, we know that Satan is the father of lies. So I ask you, do you think he's going to be like the goofy boxers that before a fight, they talk a whole bunch of smack, trying to like intimidate their opponent, and probably really just to get their own courage up? Or do you think he's a master tactician who would much rather lull his opponent to sleep with promises of peace? safety by telling you you won't have to endure any tribulation. Do you think he wants God's elect to know that no matter what he does to them, the one that endures to the end will be saved? Or do you think he prefers you get fat and lazy with the promises that you won't go through this? So my hang up with this deception is the same issue Peter had with Peter, in 2 Peter 3, he warns us that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing, following their own evil desires. And they'll laugh and I'll say, where is this promise of his coming? They will all ask. Ever since our fathers fell asleep, everything continues as it has from the beginning of creation. So those who have been raised on this lie their entire life in the church, and this promise that Jesus will take them away before tribulation, who find, suddenly find themselves in the midst of it, because that's what their pastors told them, will think that the Bible is not true. Not that the pastor lied to them. So the rapture pastors are pretty much being pawns of the devil and setting their congregations up for this apostasy that we've just read about, this falling away where love grows cold and people, Christians turn on each other. Now you contrast that with a Christianity which warns you in advance that in this world and the devil who rules this world, the prince of this world, will hate you. It will do whatever it can to destroy you. But it doesn't matter. Because this life is only temporary. And in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So once you consider yourself already dead to this world, it opens you up to a whole new eternal life, a greater life in Christ. Few, if any of us, I think are actually going to make it to the tribulation. I doubt any of us will make it through the tribulation. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're not going to see tribulation in your lives. Anyway, Jesus specifically told us, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I've overcome the world. So you make that decision today. 
Let go of the concerns of the world and embrace the peace of Christ which passes all understanding. Christ sacrificed his body, and his blood, so you don't have to fear the world. You don't have to fear the devil. You don't have to fear tribulation. Eat of his flesh and drink of his blood as a sign to the world, to the devil, and to yourself that you no longer belong to any of them, but to God and his Christ. There is no longer anything this world can do which matters because you belong 